How's it going guys? We're going to be installing the Project Get Work crankcase ventilation system. Let's get to it. Got a VQ35 motor on an engine stand and we're going to show you the parts and installation of our crankcase ventilation setup. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the stock PCV valve in the right valve cover. Move to the front of the motor and we're going to move a water pipe bracket that's going to be in the way of the new catch can tank. The rear valve cover on the driver's side has a stock port with a hose on it. We're gonna take the hose off and modify the hose for use of our crankcase setup. Here's our crankcase ventilation setup with all the parts involved in the kit. We have a right side valve cover crankcase hose, the PCV valve delete fitting, the driver's side valve cover crankcase hose, the adapter fitting from pipe to AN, the clamp for the pipe to AN fitting, Vacuum caps to cut to plug off ports, MPT fittings to AN fittings for the tank, the crankcase ventilation tank with mounting bracket, crankcase ventilation mounting bolts and spacers, and then a hose clamp holder. All these parts will be used in the ventilation setup on your motor. Yep. Starting off, passenger side valve cover, remove the PCV valve. We have our adapter fitting. As you can see, I already have the PCV valve seal installed. It's a new seal. Put a little bit of lube on it and screw it into the valve cover. It's a very fine thread. It should go in very easy by hand. And then once you get it all the way down, you can use an AN fitting wrench or a crescent wrench to tighten this all the way down. It's a very light fitting. It's going into plastic valve cover. Don't go crazy on it. Just torque it all the way down is with a light, light amount of torque. Moving on, now all these AN hoses have been blown out. Usually with AN fittings, you want to maybe put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. You're going aluminum to aluminum, so a light amount of anti-seize on the threads and then screw it in loosely and then use a crescent wrench or AN wrench. Let's see if I can even get it in today. There it is. Stop. I didn't get it. There it is, cool. I should have put some anti-seize on it before I tried to put this one on. So I got this right side valve cover on. On the actual catch can, you got ports on the side of it, got our MPT to AN fitting. You can use some Teflon tape or liquid pipe tape right there. Screw them in the side, tight, tighten them down with an AN wrench or a crescent wrench or even a regular open end of wrench. For this purpose, I'm just doing everything loosely to show how it all goes together. Now I got our catch can. I'm gonna take a bolt and spacer install them loosely into the motor. As you can see, the spacer goes on the back side, washer comes on the front side. Go into the other side, put in the bit washer behind it and tightening the bolt into the motor to the back side of the uh, timing cover. Now the spacers, the washers and are all stainless steel. The reason why they're stainless is so that we can torque them down to the factory torque spec of the timing cover. So we want to be able to torque that timing cover bolts back in place. Trying to line up the bracket evenly between the two bolts. Okay, two bolts are in, spacers are in. As you can see, I got a quarter inch torque wrench. I'm torquing them down to nine foot pounds or 180 inch pounds. Very light torque. 
millimeter bolts. They're just used to hold the timing cover on. And in this area, we're gonna use them to hold this, this uh, crankcase relinquishing tank in place. That's two. So now you can see that the coolant crossover hose goes behind the crankcase tank using the factory bracket here. The second one's removed, but it stays where it needs to. We'll take the second, the right side valve cover hose. Like again, if you put a light amount of uh, anti-seize on the threads of the AM fitting, it will help with assembly and disassembly at later dates. So you can see I got this hose on a lot easier. Backside of driver's side valve cover, you have the stock crankcase ventilation port. We have the stock hose modified. As you can tell, it's in a U shape. So we cut off part of this hose. You need to cut your existing hose to this U shape. Basically, you're trying to get a straight angle so that this hose can go around the valve cover. We'll install our hose to AN fitting adapter into the, into the pipe. And clamp it in place. Like so. So you tighten this clamp, holding this fitting in place. Take your driver's side crankcase hose, light amount of anti-seize on the threads of the AM fitting, screw the hose into it. There we go. On the body of your car, you will note that there is a frame rail in this orientation or the fire back firewall. We want to add in a mounting bracket to help secure and hold this up. Due to the length of this hose, it wants to drape down. We don't want it to drape down near the headers of the car. We want to try to keep this thing from falling down. So we came up with a simple, simple uh, way to add in a mount on the body of the car. Take your bracket, put it around the hose, and then find a nice orientation on the firewall where this thing can be drill a hole and then bolt it to the firewall. It'll hold this pipe, crankcase hose up so that it doesn't get anywhere near your headers. Go around the front of the motor. Again, anti-seize light amount on the threads and on the face of this and fitting will help get this thing on and help on any disassembly down the road. Now with the crankcase ventilation fully installed, you can see that you have both valve covers breathing through the catch can through the air filter. The only other thing to note is that the ports on the intake manifold that were for the PCB valve need to be capped and the port on your intake needs to be capped. Both of those without cap will cause vacuum leaks. If it's a supercharged or turbocharged car, then you'll have a boost leak and so forth. So there's supply uh, vacuum caps to be able to cover both those ports or use them for your application as needed. The last thing to also note is that due to this crankcase tank's location, the radiator fan setup, depending on the car and depending on which ones you have, you may need to trim the actual uh, fan shroud to clear this tank. Very minor U-shaped cut, and then once it's cut, this thing looks really good underneath the hood. As you can see, we have a completely installed crankcase ventilation setup. On our driver's side valve cover uh, hose, you can see our mount installed into the firewall area. This orientation depends on the car and how you have your charge pipe or intake on your car. Different applications of parts might change where you put your, your bolt. The whole idea is mostly to keep this hose from wanting to drape or fall down onto a header. Nothing worse than burning rubber. Next, you see the crankcase tank installed and you can see that we have a cut in our fan shroud. This cut is to add in extra area for the tank. Also gives you easy access to the mount right there. 
Also makes it a little easier to get to the mount bolts on the front of the timing cover. Overall, this is a fully installed. Hopefully this video is clear enough to give you all the right tools to install this kit and move forward and make better power on your motor.